So this uh, uh, presentation is about the net zero energy building in tropical climate or composite climate. Tropical climate in general, because when we uh, discuss about the world scenario, India is termed as a tropical climate. And, uh, and some of the case studies that I have taken in India are from the composite climates. So it is a mixture of composite. And when we talk about the world scenario, then it is tropical climate. So, uh, so energy efficiency is important because as we know, the energy costs are getting higher. So cheapest energy is the energy. It is popular saying that energy, we don't use it. So it is uh, possible when, you, when we build a net zero or an energy efficient building uh, in a climate type, whatever it is given. So I am Dr. Fareen. I am uh, assistant professor at Faculty of Architecture and Planning, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University. So uh, I have done my research on uh, energy efficient building envelope and I proceeded my research after my PhD towards the net zero energy buildings. And I am doing some uh, live projects on that also in the India Indian scenario. So, uh, so India is uh, in Indian scenario, uh, what is uh, Latestly, latest uh, derivatives have come from the government that we have to build uh, smart cities. And the smart city mission tells us that the energy consumption in buildings for heating, cooling, and lighting must be reduced uh, for the, of the Indian cities, uh, which requires the energy consumption reduction by 20%. And the use of energy uh, resources uh, has to be increased, increased by 20%. So these goals can be achieved by constructing the net zero energy buildings in the future and uh, by net zero energy buildings because both these points are covered in the net zero energy buildings, which says that we have to increase the, uh, increase the uh, energy efficiency in the building and then that reduced energy consumption has to be compensated by, the, uh, by addressing them by the use of uh, energy uh, use them renewable energy resources on the site itself. So these two uh, motives of smart city emissions can be achieved through net zero energy. So what I am going to explain in this uh, presentation is uh, the uh, various design strategies that are required for building net zero energy building in tropical or pro uh, in composite climate of India and that was analyzed. And then those strategies are tested by redesigning an energy efficient building in the same climate to achieve the net zero energy. Why I am using uh, energy efficient building for to redesign because uh, uh, that energy efficient building is already incorporated uh, various design features, passive and active both. So not much effort is needed to uh, redesign that uh, uh, energy efficient building into a net zero energy building. That is why I have taken that example to make it, a, make it as a net zero energy building. So this is the methodology that I have adopted. First, I will analyze the previous studies, then uh, analyze the case studies that are net zero energy uh, buildings in the same climate. And then uh, I have remodeled and redesigned the energy efficient office building by taking the learnings of the literature studies and the design strategies of the net zero energy building. And then, the models has been simulated, calibrated, and analyzed using the passive, active, and renewable technologies to get the net zero energy buildings. And then the recommend recommendations for net zero energy buildings has been framed. So first method uh, to do the simulation is to define the static and the dynamic parameters of the simulation. So these uh, parameters are analyzed through the case studies of the net zero energy buildings. And these were selected on the basis of usage, climate type, and the green building certification. So, so all the buildings that has been selected are been Greha or lead rated. And the of, uh, usage is the office building and climate type is again, uh, when it is uh, taken, uh, foreign building or an international building that is tropical climate and Indian, it is taken as a composite climate. So Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan is in New Delhi, Akshay Uja Bhavan, that is in Haryana and uh, PTM Zero building is in Malaysia. So these all three buildings are net zero energy. So for analysis, what, the, uh, what has been done, the, the strategies has been grouped in three parts. 
passive, active, and renewable. So passive uh, features include site planning, internal planning, building envelope. Active features include HVAC, lighting, equipment performance, and the lighting controls. Renewable energy uh, contains the PV, solar panels, PV panels, BIPV panels, solar thermal plants, and the wind turbines that has that uh, according to the climate type, whatever technologies that can be used. So uh, then these uh, strategies have been tabulated of these three, of all these three case studies in the form of uh, this uh, table. So in this table, first the, the introduction is about the building, then the features that is there for the site and internal planning, those are the passive features, building envelope. So building envelope, whatever the materials has been used in wall, roof, windows, the wall, uh, window to wall ratio, sharing devices. Active features uh, includes lighting, the type of lighting, the type of HVAC that has been used, set point temperature, and the equipment load that is there in the building, and the total EPI of the building after incorporating all these passive features. And these, uh, uh, the reduced energy consumption has been uh, compensated by the renewable energy that has been generated on the site through the PV panels in, the, in all these three buildings. So uh, I'm going to detail out what passive design features that has been uh, there in the, uh, these three buildings. First is the orientation. So orientation according to the composite climate or tropical climate, it has to be in north-south direction. So all these three buildings are oriented towards north-south. If we take the, uh, if we see the Akshay Urja Bhavan, uh, the, it, it's, uh, uh, we cannot talk about its orientation because it is in square shape with the courtyard in between. But when we see the uh, planning and the orientation of windows, the windows in the north and east and west direction, they are orienting towards the, they are uh, projected out from the facade and orienting towards the south direction. This is the way they have treated their windows that are there in the east and west direction. So that the horizontal radiation, the half radiation is not entering into the building, to the east and west direction. This is how they have treated their windows that are there in the, uh, in the east and west direction. And uh, when we uh, see all these uh, two buildings, one is I, Indra Pariyavanar Bhavan and the PTM Zero building, it uh, core is placed in the west direction. Both of the buildings, their core is placed uh, in the west direction. And the orientation of the building is totally towards the north and south direction. The openings are uh, mainly in the south or in the north direction in both of these buildings and in the Akshay Urja Bhavan too, the maximum openings are there in the south direction so that it can get a maximum daylighted space in the interiors. The courtyard is there again in, uh, in the uh, Indra Pariyavarad Bhavan also and in the Akshay Urja Bhavan also for the light and ventilation both. So this courtyard helps in uh, uh, in uh, getting the daylight into the interiors, again, it helps in the ventilation into the interior spaces, cross ventilation into the interior spaces. So this is uh, Indra Parya Varad Bhavan in which uh, the courtyard is again uh, shaded by the PV panels. The courtyard is shaded and it is landscaped so that the cross ventilation happens into the interior spaces. The cold air, cold breezes goes from the courtyard to the interior spaces. So in Akshay Urja Bhavan also, the courtyard space is shaded uh, through the angled louver, which allows the winter sun to get inside the building and cuts the summer sun. And uh, one uh, extra feature that is uh, fitted inside the courtyard is the a mist water shower, which helps in evaporating cooling during the summer period. Uh, the, another feature data has been fitted in the south facade of the Akshay Urja Bhavan is the solar chimney, which again facilitates the cross ventilation in the building. This is how it works. This uh, solar chimney helps in the ventilation of the uh, cross ventilation in the building and courtyards again uh, through this uh, Miss showers, it helps in evaporative cooling and cool air goes inside the building. 
making the indoor uh, temperature comfortable and habitable in the hot climates also. Then when we talk about the internal planning, uh, the stone and ferro uh, jalis has been placed uh, in the circulation spaces, which uh, allows the cross ventilation. And the depth of the building, when we see the plan in all these three plans, the depth of these uh, spaces are kept below 15 meters in all the, in all the three plans. As we know, the daylight enters uh, uh, the building from uh, enters uh, the building from the windows. It goes up to the depth of five meters, and if you use light shelf, it goes up to the depth of uh, seven meters approximately. So when we keep the plan depth uh, less than fifteen meters, then in the day hours, all the spaces inside uh, the building can be daylit. So that. Uh, uh, criteria that criteria has been kept in mind while designing all these three buildings. So these in all these three, three buildings, the depth of the uh, plan is less than ten meters, uh, fifteen meters. So it's uh, so for uh, Akshay Jabhavan, it is ten meters. For uh, PTM Zero, it is uh, thirteen meters, and in uh, in Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan, it is fifteen meters. So it is from ten to fifteen meters. So all these spaces inside the buildings are 100% daily that is zero spaces. Cell shading is there in uh, PTM zero building. So uh, when it goes up, the floor plate has been increased so that mutual shading is taking place. So it again uh, reduces the heat load and heat transfer in the building. To incorporate more daylight into the interior spaces. Indirect, uh, uh, indirect light has been taken into the interior spaces in PTM zero building through the skylight. So this is how it has been taken inside. The skylight has been oriented towards the south direction, and a, proje a projection helps to cut the summer sun. And again, when the sun is down, then uh, it is reflected by the uh, curve shape of the skylight, and then it goes inside. So heat is not transferred into the interior, only the light, indirect light comes inside the building, which again uh, allows the light, daylight to enter into the building and is make the space daylighted. In uh, Indra Pariyavarar Bhavan, the uh, atrium has been used to daylight the space in, in the interior spaces. The another uh, feature that has been used in the Indra Pariyavara Bhavan and PTM Zero building is the light shelves. Light shelves, what light shelves do, uh, light shelves reflect the light, uh, it, it, uh, it cuts the direct sunlight to enter, uh, to enter the inside the building and directs the indirect sunlight into the building like this. So this uh, uh, upper surface of uh, this light shelf has been has uh, covered with reflective coating. So uh, when uh, it uh, uh, it it falls on the light shelves, it uh, it is directed inside the building, and it is not a direct radiation. It is the reflected radiation. So indirect light comes inside the building without uh, uh, heating or without raising the temperature of the inside. So in PTM zero building, the ceiling where the light falls inside the building is also made uh, with reflective glass so that the light travels inside the building uh, to a larger depth. And uh, from where the light gets inside the building, a louvers is placed, a reflective louvers is also placed so that when whenever the light is not required or whenever the uh, there is some radiation in the heat in, in hot days, it cuts that light. It only allows the indirect radiation, so indirect light to come inside the building without heating the building inside. So these light cells are very helpful for uh, uh, light to travel deep inside the building. So through these uh, light cells, we can make light, daylight to travel deep inside the building. So And uh, that is how we can make a floor plate uh, to the depth of 15 meter also. For a building envelope, very well insulated and energy efficient building envelope is used in all the selected buildings. Uh, AAC block has been used and uh, in AAC blocks, a cavity has been made in which a foam and then a mineral pool insulation has been uh, used. And uh, in 
Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan and PTM Geo Building. And Indra, uh, Akshay Urja Bhavan, in Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan, AAC block with rock wool is used. So very insulated and the uh, energy efficient building envelope has been used in building with restrict the heat gain inside the building. For roof, uh, what has been done, uh, a reflected uh, pool roof is used uh, in the uh, in the Akshay Urja Bhavan. Green roof has been used in Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan and insulated roof has been used in the Akshay Urja Bhavan in which you can see the stereo foam uh, insulation has been used the above, the, uh, above the deck of the roof and mineral wool insulation has been used in the below deck uh, roof of the, uh, in the slanting uh, part of the roof type. So these two types of insulations has been used in PTM geo building and reflected roof has been used in the Akshay Urja Bhavan. So, uh, so all these techniques are reducing the heat gain from the roof inside the building. As we know, windows are the weakest point from where the heat gain occurs inside the building. For this, they have used a dual uh, plane panel, high performance glass. This high performance glass, the VLT is uh, optimum, but solar heat gain coefficient is very low. So uh, by lowering solar heat gain coefficient of any windows, the heat gain inside the building is reduced. So this uh, dual plane high glass, uh, high uh, performance glass has been used in all the three buildings. Window to wall ratio, again, if we optimize the window to wall ratio, because uh, windows are very necessary to uh, obtain sufficient daylight into the uh, interiors. And again, windows are the weakest point from where the heat gain occurs, heat gain or losses occurs inside the building. It is a very critical and a very vital a uh, passive design feature, it has to be designed very carefully to get the interior space deleted also and to reduce the heat gain and losses inside the building. For this, uh, what uh, has been done in all the three buildings, the orientation of windows is very important. So all the uh, windows that ranges from the WWR of all the three windows ranges from 20 to 30% with suitable setting devices and the direction of the windows, the orientation of the windows are kept that the, all the windows, maximum windows are there in south or in the north direction. So this is uh, the placement of windows in PCM uh, zero building in which you, you can see in south and north direction, maximum windows has been placed with the proper shading devices and east and west direction, minimum windows has been placed. In Indira Pariyavaran Bhavan also, north is the orientation where maximum windows are placed. And in Akshay Urja Bhavan, when windows are coming in the west direction, then they are protruded out from the facade and oriented towards the south. So maximum windows in Akshay Urja Bhavan are oriented in the south direction with a proper shielding device. So all these, uh, whatever I have discussed, uh, they were, uh, uh, rather it be as internal planning in which uh, there was a placement of core, the plan depth, the courtyard, then the high performance building envelope, glazing and shading devices. All these are the passive features that has been adopted to reduce the heat gain and maximize the daylight into the interiors. Then apart from that, to make a building net zero, active design features are also very important because the uh, energy consumption in any of the office building are majorly from the heating, cooling, and lighting load. So through passive, we can reduce the lighting load, but HVAC load is a uh, load. Uh, it, it can also be reduced by the passive features, but through active features, it can be reduced drastically. So that it can be uh, it can be made as a net zero building. So for that reason, energy efficient HVAC system, energy efficient lighting systems, and energy efficient equipments are very important uh, to make an energy uh, to make a building a net zero building. So for that reason, uh, to reduce the HVAC load, what has been used in Indra Pariyavaran Bhavan, they have used 
chill winds and geothermal cooling system that reduces the cooling load and again increases the coefficient of performance of any hvac system so for this reason the coefficient of performance of this hvac system reduced from 3 to 8 by incorporating these technologies and in uh, ptm zero building radiant cooling coupled with geothermal cooling has been used in this system so uh, one of the uh, important feature that reduces the hvac load is the mixed mode ventilation in which what we do we uh, make zones which are air conditioned and the zones which are not which can be naturally ventilated so 24 to 38% of the outer spaces in all the three buildings are air conditioned and all the other spaces that uh, that uh, include the circulation and the service areas that are naturally ventilated so uh, when we uh, when we are making only 24 and 38% of the office space air conditioned then the hv ac load of the building reduced by 70% we are only using 24 say 38% uh, only the spaces air conditioned for lighting what we uh, what has been done lighting sensors has been installed energy efficient lighting has been installed that is uh, tft and uh, led lighting t5 lighting installed with daylight sensors it reduces the lighting load of the building and uh, the uh, the lights are only lit at the spaces where where the daylight is not reaching so for by installing these sensors it will sense the illumination level of that spaces and lighting uh, and uh, artificial lighting will only be lit when there is no daylight then high uh, high performance hsu lives computer and equipment also reduces the load of the building so by incorporating passive and active features both the energy consumption of these buildings these three buildings has been reduced to 45.25 in indra paryavaran bhavan 17 kilowatt hour per meter square per year in akshay urja bhavan and uh, 30 kilowatt hour per meter square per year in ptm zero building so the uh, energy consumption of any conventional office building in composite climate is approximately 170 kilowatt hour per meter square per year so the reduction itself is uh, from 170 to 45 to 17 kilowatt per meter square per year it is approximately 80 to 75 to 80% reduction and then this reduced energy consumption has been given by installing solar pv panels on the rooftop of the building or the courtyard of the building in all of these three buildings so in akshay urja bhavan solar uh, panels has been installed uh, 930 kilowatt kilowatt power solar panels is installed in this buildings which generate the electricity of 14.3 lakh units per year so they are oriented towards the south direction for maximum efficiency in ptm zero building solar panels has been installed above roof above courtyard and in the parking areas so uh, pv panels that are installed on the roof are the polycrystalline pv panels amorphous or the monocrystalline and the uh, pv panel that has been installed on the uh, on the courtyard of the building that is the see through pv panel so that daylight comes inside the building so according and it is called building integrated pv panels because it is the part of the design of building and again in the akshay urja bhavan a uh, 42.5 kilowatt power pv panels has been installed on roof and 5 kilowatt uh, power Uh, building integra integrated pv panels are installed on the courtyard of akshay akshay urja so uh, by installing uh, bipv again uh, it uh, allows the the these are uh, translucent and this allows the daylight to come inside the courtyard 
so by these analysis of case studies uh, i come to the conclusion that by uh, if we incorporate all the passive and the active strategies in the building then 1 kilowatt pv panel uh, power pv panels are required for every 34 to 43 meter square floor area of the building so this is the uh, major conclusion i got from these uh, case studies and for passive and active strategies that i will incorporate in energy energy efficient building to make it a net zero building so these uh, learnings are there from the case studies orientation should be in north side direction with courtyards use of 100% day lit spaces in the uh, should be there in the interiors mixed mode ventilation uh, has to be used approximately 60% of the building should be naturally ventilated plant depth should be 13 meter that i have uh, taken as a range from 15 to 10 so uh, i have averaged out and make it as a 13 meter should the plant depth and wwr of 25% is the optimum is the maximum number of windows in north and south direction placement of service and circulation course uh, should be there in the east or west direction and maximum in the west direction because this is the space where the maximum heat gain occurs so it will make as a buffer zone insulated building in the love made of ac block with a mesentery cavity and comprising of very good insulation in between that reflective insulation insulated roof has to be used and dual plane high performance glass in the shaded windows has to be used in on the facade to make it well insulated high performance in the love for active features hvac with coefficient of performance uh, approximately 7 has to be used energy efficient lighting with t5 and led fixtures with daylight sensors has to be used and energy efficient equipment with the equipment load of 5 watt per meter square is desirable connection of pv and bipv for electricity generation uh, has to be there to achieve a net zero building so these are the learnings and these learnings are then incorporated into the simulation uh, to achieve a net zero building so uh, by simulation tool and what simulation tool has to be used for that what i have done i have done approximately uh, analyzed or uh, studied 150 research paper related to the simulation and found that energy plus is the most popular tool for doing the simulation for research and uh, after that there is design builder but uh, uh, energy plus is a is a tool which uh, uh, takes input in the form of text and design builder is a tool and the simulation engine in the design builder is used uh, used by the design builder builder is the energy plus simulation engine so again uh, uh, the energy plus with the 3d interface is there in design builder so i have preferred using design builder for doing the simulation so these are the uh, cap uh, capabilities of the building energy simulation tools it uh, reduce cost of exploring different design options and hvac design aids in analysis of uh, energy uses in building energy conservation studies energy design studies to explore the energy saving potential of different design strategies and operations designer can experiment with different design option considering life cycle cost and carbon footprint that can be done in this uh, simulation tools helps in designing the building to conform with building codes and rating systems so when we are making a compliance with building codes and rating systems these uh, simulation tools in helps in making that compliance reports also it enables the parametric study of various building animals uh, elements like shading windows u values of walls and roof etc so parametric study related to all these passive strategies can also be done through these simulation studies so application is there for energy heat transfer code compliance cost control system that is building as energy management and control system design and quality assurance that is reduction in carbon footprint so these are all the building energy simulation tools that are available uh, in the market and uh, according to the type of simulation in, uh, one has to do one can choose from that these tools and can be checked through the website also it's called building energy software tools 
So I have used Design Builder. It has capable of doing similar energy simulation, visualization, CFD analysis, daylight analysis, optimization, carbon and cost, and scripting because it is capable of doing all these kind of simulations. So this is the best software that can be used for energy simulation and daylighting. Uh, so uh, what I have done uh, for any simulation engine, the building geometry that has to be inputted, weather condition, HVAC, HVAC system internal loads, then operation strategies and schedules, simulation specific parameters that has to be entered and then we can get the results. So base case can be uh, to get any result from simulation program. First, we have to build, make a base case on which the strategies can be, can be uh, incorporated. So for making that base case uh, uh, from that, uh, from studying the uh, various uh, research paper, I got to know that uh, real and virtual are the mixture of real and virtual is used only 9%. A virtual base, uh, base case can be used or the real base case can be used. Therefore, in this case, what I have uh, pre-decided also that I, have to pay, I will take an energy efficient building and then I will make that building into net zero building. For that uh, means I have taken Skyview Corporate Park that is located in Gurgaon. This is energy efficient building, lead rated building with, uh, with an energy performance index of 112 kilowatt hour per meter square air. So uh, we know that to make a building uh, net zero, the energy reduction uh, has to be there from 40 to 30 kilowatt power per meter square per year, so that the renewable energy that has been generated, it compensated the reduced energy consumption that is there in the building. So uh, in this building, there is a scope of reducing this energy consumption from 112 to 40 kilowatt per meter square. For that, we will use the uh, learnings from the net zero energy building and then incorporate in this. So this is the plan of this building in which there is a core in between. So we can see the depth of uh, this building is approximately, it is 36 meter. So uh, again, when a light travels inside the plan to five meters or maximum to the seven meters. So first, what we have to do while redesigning, we have to uh, change the floor plate according to the learnings we have got from the net zero energy buildings. So uh, for that, first we have to make the base case that that is the base case into the program, and then calibrate is using the mean bias error, root mean square error, and coefficient of variance of root mean square error. These are the uh, statistical method to calibrate the base case. So these two, uh, this base case, this is the actual consumption, actual building with actual consumption and the simulated building with the simulated consumption. So this orange part is the simulated. So we can so see from the graph, it is coming nearly the same and then calibrated using the mean bias error and coefficient of variance of mean, mean uh, root mean square error. Then after making this base case, simulated uh, this base case in a, in a uh, simulation program, then case one is we will uh, make the plan according to the net zero building. We will change the site planning and internal planning. In case two, it will make the building envelope uh, a very efficient building envelope by taking the learnings from net zero, what we have uh, concluded then incorporate the active design strategies, then incorporate renewable energy technologies, and then do the simulation using all these four uh, methods and make the building net zero. So these are the parameters of the uh, base case. So this uh, location, typical floor area, total floor area, number of floors, floor to floor height, working hours and occupancy that has been made constant. What has been altered is the site planning and orientation. The orientation in the uh, 
in the in the base case is northeast and southwest and that has been made north south direction that we can see here placement was core was central the center core was there so what has been done east and west facing cores were placed to make a buffer then plant depth overall was 34 meter that is 13 meter from the core it is 13 meter plant depth from the core so interior spaces were not at all deleted so it has been reduced the core has been reduced to 13 meter with incorporating courtyard inside the building so light will come from the courtyard also and from the exterior faces also then WWR has been reduced from 55 to 25. Placement of window was uh, previously was all over the facade. So no windows were there on the east and west side in the improved envelope. Shading, no shading devices were there. The shading devices have been incorporated with a projection factor of 0.3. Uh, wall assembly, it was brick masonry with cavity wall with a U value of 1.166. Now it is very highly insulated uh, uh, brick wall assembly has been used with a U value of 0.34. Reflected insulated roof were there with a U value of uh, 0.3. Now it has been uh, the U value of roof reduced to 0.2. Glazing, dual plane, low E glass used, uh, used in the uh, base case. Original building, so low E dual plane glass with reflective and aragon filled uh, glass has been used with a U value of 1.5 and solar heat gain coefficient of 0.26. Previously, it was 0.629. So we can see uh, from that we uh, already it uh, some passive strategies were used in the envelope, uh, insulated envelope was there, but for making a net zero building, we have made that envelope highly insulated and to reduce heat gain or losses in the building. Then for active strategies, 100% area was air conditioned. It was reduced to 40%. Coefficient of performance was initially 5.4 of HVAC. It is reduced to 7. Set point temperature was 22. It was made as 25. Then uh, lighting fixtures, uh, lighting perform uh, LPD was 9.5. Previously, it has been made 4 and equipment load 10. Reduced from 10.5 to 5. So, for uh, by incorporating all these features, what I have said, uh, by redesigning a building, incorporating the courtyard inside, and then reducing the plan depth and making a courtyard uh, to the one third of the length of the building so that max uh, optimum light penetrate inside the building. So, by doing, by incorporating all these uh, uh, passive features related to site planning and internal planning. 6.38% of reduction was there in the energy. So we can see the height, lighting load has been, uh, heating load has been uh, increased a bit because of the orientation that has been uh, changed from uh, northwest, uh, northeast to southwest to north south direction. But lighting and cooling load has been reduced because the plant depth and the uh, placement of cores at the right place. Then uh, Changing the uh, building envelope to very highly insulated, uh, high performance building envelope, the reduction is 12.31% in the energy. And then incorporating all the active features that has been discussed, the reduction is 52.03%. So uh, we can see from uh, passive strategies, we can only reduce up to 15, uh, 12 to 15% or 20%, but through the active strategies we can reduce we can get a reduction of 50 to 50 percent of energy so very important features so active strategies play a major role in the reduction of energy consumption in net zero building so then uh, incorporation of renewable energy technologies what has been done uh, pv panels has been installed installed on the roof and the uh, bipv has been installed on the courtyard and on the south facing uh, windows of the building. So by incorporating all these uh, PV and BIPV panels, the generation of uh, electricity is, you can see this is the generation of electricity of PV panels on roof. It is uh, 
35.03 kilowatt hour per meter square on courtyard it is 5.3 and 1.1 so when uh, we simulate uh, the uh, last lastly the combination of all the strategies to achieve net zero energy buildings when we incorporate all the strategies from 1 to 4 and incorporated the renewable energies also then the energy consumption that is there uh, in the by incorporating all the passive strategies was uh, was 41.1 and it nullifies by using the these active uh, these are renewable energy that uh, comes out to be 41.2 so there is a energy saving of uh, 100.3% so point 3 can be uh, taken as the uh maintenance or the uh, wear and tear uh, of the solar panels and uh, this is how it becomes the when this is the positive consumption and this negative part shows the generation of electricity on the site and this makes both of them cancels out and by com by combining all the strategies active passive and the renewable it makes a building a net zero energy building so this is how this building has been skyview park has been made from energy efficient to a net zero energy building so case studies indicate that uh, every 34 to 43 meter square of floor area required 1 kilowatt power of the uh, pv panel to convert that into a net zero building and from simulation also it has uh, been found that 1 kilowatt of 1 uh, kilowatt power of pv panel is required for a big 44 meters square of the net zero building so so it this is how it validates the simulation simulation uh, values with the real ones so this is what is there this is the uh, theoretical study that has been done to make to get to uh, get the learnings from the net zero energy buildings that are there and making a energy efficient building into a net zero building by incorporating passive active and the renewable energy resources so next is a uh, is the uh, study or the uh, live that uh, live example that is being done in the uh, warm humid climate it is a net zero building that has been designed by me and uh, after few days the construction of this uh, building will also be uh, will take place and this will be a net zero energy building in eramalur kerala and the climate type of uh, this uh, uh, place is warm humid climate so uh, the dry bulb temperature of this place ranges from 25 to 30 degree centigrade relative humidity all over the air is very high you can see from the chart it is very high and the prevailing winds are from the northwest direction so this is the climate data of uh, the place which uh, Uh, which is taken into consideration while designing the building so when we design a building in a warm humid climate the major concern is the uh, heat gain we have to reduce the heat gain from inside the building and to incorporate the cross ventilation inside the building. so cross ventilation uh, is uh, majorly required because of the high humidity of the place cross ventilation will uh, make the inside uh, temperature atmosphere comfortable so so this is the actual site on which the residence has to be made a house has to be made our four detached houses are designed on that site so this is how it has been designed so it is uh, while designing it has been taken consideration that uh, the major openings are there in the north and south direction so in this you can see this is the north it is uh, facing towards the left so major openings are there in north south direction and the uh, central courtyard is there ots has been placed for cross ventilation inside the building so whatever space you are seeing inside this all of these spaces have two windows one is towards the courtyard and another is outside the building this will facilitate the cross ventilation inside the building 
so this this is the major uh, consideration that has been taken in this house to uh, facilitate the cross ventilation and again the projection is there because the uh, rainfall is the major thing and to uh, reduce the heat gain the shading devices horizontal shading devices or four of uh, 600 has been installed in all the directions so then this design is then uh, checked through simulation so first for cross ventilation the design is checked through cfd analysis so this is the cfd at 1.5 meter level in this we can see uh the wind direction is from the wind is coming from uh, south west direction so the wind direction has been marked and this is the north that has been marked so wind as wind is coming uh, from south west direction and it is inclined at uh, 45 degrees so all the faces all the uh, faces of the or uh, opposite faces of the uh, houses are getting the wind we can see the optimum wind is there uh, to the opposite faces so cross it will facilitate the cross ventilation inside the building and this is a pressure difference so pressure difference is created again uh, at the windward and the leeward side so this will again create the facilitate the cross ventilation inside the building so this is the cfd at 4.5 uh, meter level and cfd in section so these are uh, uh, cfd analysis helps in uh, uh, finalizing the design that there is for cross ventilation is happening that wind is also getting and the pressure difference is also created in the opposite direction and for daylight analysis uh, the illumination level of the overcast sky has been checked so uh, when uh, when you can see in the design i can see you in the design so uh, the grills has been placed uh, placed uh, near the w, uh, near the wc toilet areas and the dress areas for facilitating the cross ventilation and for uh, not getting the heat inside the building the grills has been placed placed so when we place a grill in simulation it do not uh, uh, simulate for the daylight so in toilet dress and uh, the you can cannot see the daylight uh, inside the building because the it is simulated for the grill so that ventilation occurs and heat intake does not occur but in all the other spaces or the living spaces it is daylighted sufficiently so it is uh, sufficiently daylighted or not there is another analysis that has been done that is called spatial daylight autonomy this is the spatial daylight autonomy map of daylighting it says that when it is green and yellow it tells us that the 150% of the area 50% times the daylight is there inside the building so all the spaces which are the uh, functional spaces all are green or yellow uh, so it uh, tells that above all these spaces are getting daylight from 8 am to 6 am uh, it uh, it is uh, more than 50% times it is getting the daylight so this is the optimum one and for glare so daylight uh, for uh, doing the analysis of glare annual sunlight exposure map is required it says that ki uh, Uh, from the daylight autonomy it only tells you ki daylight is there into the interior spaces but do not tells whether this daylight includes the glare or not so to do the analysis of this uh, daylight uh, glare part uh, this annual sunlight exposure is required so in this uh, uh, the uh, what these annual uh, sunlight exposure less values are desirable so black and blue are the less values of annual annual sunlight exposure it says ki glare is not there inside the building so doing all these three analysis we conclude that there is sufficient daylight into the interior spaces between 8 am to 6 pm only one space is there 
where sufficient daylight is not there. This is this corner of this space, but this is a staircase part in which this part is coming in the east direction. So when we give a small window in this direction, so they so from this analysis, we conclude that we can give a small window in this direction so that this space can also be daylighted. So through this analysis, we see all the uh, all the spaces, all the uh, habitable spaces are well daylighted with no glare and only one space that is staircase. It is uh, it requires some light so we can give small opening there also. So uh, then it is checked for energy simulation and for energy simulation, what has been done, uh, the base case has been made, the whatever design we have been, uh, that has been made, it is uh, modeled and calibrated for, the, for making the base case. And then active strategies are incorporated, passive strategies are incorporated, and then Renewable energies uh, has been incorporated in the building to make it net zero and net positive residence. So uh, this is the uh, inputs of the base kit that has been there in which uh, the sizes of the uh, floor plates, floor areas, the WWR that is 30% and uh, op openable window to floor area ratio, it is 16.66%. The orientation is north-south and the aspect ratio is one is to two, the U values of the base case. Uh, the base case uh, may, uh, what we have done, we have taken very conventional materials and then we have checked for the energy efficient materials and see which uh, material is giving best performance in the terms of economy and in the terms of energy both. Because as, as it is a small residence, uh, the economy plays a very vital role in uh, deciding what strategies we have to use. Because uh, very expensive strategies and get, getting high uh, efficiency is not res, uh, uh, desirable in uh, any residence uh, because it comes on the uh, occupant only. So. Uh, for that reason, the discounted payback period has been used to decide which is strategies is optimum uh, on the basis of energy and on the basis of cost too. So, uh, so all the uh, materials, all the uh, strategies that has been used in the building are tested for the economy also. So this is how the base case has been calibrated. It is said that for any residential building, it has a load of lighting, acing fans, uh, evaporative coolers, refrigeration, uh, TV, and other equipment. So it is divided into equipments, lighting, and HVAC. So for equipment load is 27%, lighting it is 20 and HVAC is 45%. So it is calibrated using this data. It has a source from a research paper and then it is simulated so that it gets equipment load of 24%, HVAC 49 and lighting 27. So uh, the, for getting, for uh, calculating the economic benefit, the discounted payback period has been used. And this is a formula, this is a bit complicated formula, but it tells the, uh, in years, the payback period. And it includes the uh, escalation rate of the construction of the uh, electricity bill and the discounted rate of 6%. This is how tariff data that is used in the uh, calculation has been derived. For Kerala, the electricity charge has been derived as 9.57%, which incorporate all the charges that is uh, fixed load demand charge, surcharges, and the due, electricity duty charges by incorporating all these charges, it comes average out to be 9.7 rupees. And the escalation rate of electricity tariff uh, by uh, taking the data from of five years, it comes out to be 10.68%. So all these data has been taken and then the plinth area, using the plinth area rate of the buildings, building uh, from CBWD, the basic cost of the base case building has been derived. It is comes up to be 
35,63,286. So all these data is used to decide, used to decide the best uh, or the optimum strategies uh, on the basis of energy and cost. So active strategies in which uh, selective air conditioned areas uh, are decided. So this uh, dark blue area are the air conditioned area and the gray areas are the naturally ventilated area. So uh, previously base case was simulated for 100% air conditioned area. So when we are doing a selective air conditioned uh, space, then 13.1% uh, reduction of energy is there. Then, so what is the methodology in this simulation is that we selected the strategies, that is case one is the selective AC, and then on that case one only, I have incorporated the another strategies. So on this case one, I have used the lighting sensors, that is the linear, uh, so three types of lighting sensors are there, step, control, linear control, and linear off. Step means key, the illumination that is required, it is calculated in the form of steps and linear, the, wherever the illumination, that illumination reaches, it uh, switch off, uh, it dims the light and linear off says it switch off the light. So lighting sensors uh, in, installed, all the three types of lighting sensors are installed and then linear off is the best case. So linear off lighting sensors uh, has been taken as the case forward and 12.03% uh, saving is there when we use sensors in the, in the uh, space. So we can see this uh, saving is huge because uh, the space is deleted. If the space was not deleted, lighting sensors would not help. So this is helping and it is reducing energy because the space is sufficiently deleted and it uh, and we get the uh, reduction of uh, uh, lighting load or the uh, or the total uh, energy consumption load by 12.02%. And from if we compare it from the base case, uh, selective AC and the lighting uh, controls helps in reduction of 22.4%. Then uh, mixed mode ventilation has been used. Mixed mode ventilation is that uh, whenever the outside temperature is comfortable, the HVAC will be off and natural ventilation mode will work. And uh, whenever the outside temperature is not comfortable, we will use the HVAC. So by incorporating that mode, 8.56% uh, of uh, energy saving is there and total 29.05% uh, saving is there by incorporating the uh, selective AC, mix mode and the lighting sensors, all of the three. Then after using all these strategies, passive strategies are in incorporated. So from the simulation and from the study also, it says that for a low rise building, the highest energy or the highest heat transfer is through the roof. You can see uh, from after window is through the roof, it is 26%, and from windows, it comes out to be 69%. And through the simulation also, I see uh, we can see that uh, the roof, this is the roof part, uh, brown part, this is the roof part, and the uh, solar heat gain from the exterior windows is the yellow part. So maximum is there from the windows. And then if we talk about the envelope, then it is there from the roof. And uh, the heat transfer from the wall in the low rise building is very less. So uh, for that, what we have done, we are not using insulation in the roof. We are using only the changing the uh, wall assembly type that is from brick to uh, we are uh, changing to a compressed stabilized earth block, hollow clay brick, fly ash clay brick, and AAC blocks. These are the four materials we change and get the result for the optimum one. This is the assembly. And uh, by doing the simulation, we found that uh, AAC block has the highest efficiency and there is. Uh, 
also a cost reduction also in the while doing the simulation uh, while calculating the dpp there is a cost reduction not an increase in cost while using the aac so we have selected the aac as a walling material from that so uh, then we have used insulating plaster so insulating plaster again uh, we have get the reduction in energy consumption by 1.56% if we use this insulating plaster on both sides but uh, the uh, you can see this is the discounted payback period in the red the discounted payback period of insulating plaster is very high and energy efficiency is very less so we can discard also use of uh, this insulating plaster we can say we cannot use this uh, use this insulating plaster because we because of the less energy efficiency and high discounted payback and this uh, from this we have taken uh, the insulating plaster on the both side and taken forward then again energy efficient roof assembly so we have simulated the uh, insulation above deck and the insulation below deck and found that uh, insulation above deck with the uh, eps uh, insulation the maximum efficiency is there with a payback period of 5.48 so this is the most efficient one and then uh, this this model has been taken forward to incorporate the cool roof and green roof inputs so these uh, uh, inputs are then simulated so for cool roof tiles was used and the second cool roof is the paint so from this we found that the second assembly which has the cool roof paint is the highest uh, any, uh, efficiency in terms of dpp and in terms of the energy efficiency also and then this model has been taken forward and glazing type has been changed so all the glazing types that is the uh, from uh, single clear glass has been changed to gray glass low e glass reflective clear glass tinted glass double clear glass double low e glass and reflective clear glass so these uh, all types of glazing assembly has been uh, altered into the uh, into the uh, into this uh, this case in which there is a cool roof incorporated and then we found out that uh, solar reflective clear glass is the optimum case with discounted payback period of 0.88 years and energy saving of 3.1 years so case 8 with the epi 44.52 kilowatt per hour meter square air has been taken further for the simulation and then shading device has been incorporated so shading device uh, uh, has been uh, made according to the shading mask so this is the sun part diagram in which the shading mask has been made uh, for the shading devices in the various orientation and this is the result that has been found in south the horizontal, uh, horizontal projection factor has been taken as 0.35 vertical fins 0.35 north 0.35 and 0.45 we can see from this in north the sun is uh, more uh, in the months of june april august and these are the hotted months so this requires uh, the shading in the in this uh, from the these water uh, horizontal sun from east and west direction in these east and west direction the sun is directly coming uh, as a horizontal sun you can see like uh, like this so for this reason uh, uh, the horizontal shading device as well as the vertical shading device will not shade it so oblique shading devices has been used at an angle at 30 degrees from horizontal so this will block the sun from east and west direction so this is how the shading devices has been altered in all the three all the four directions and then simulated this is how it is so north and west side view in which you can see uh, the west side has oblique uh, shading devices and in north side it is horizontal and the fins both and this is south this is the horizontal shading devices with fins and in east side it has the oblique shading devices and simulated and we get that the 2.39% of energy saving is there and with a uh, with a discounted payback period of 5.54 effectively and then the uh, it shows the overall uh, overall energy saving and the 
overall uh, the uh, EPI of the building while incorporating all these nine cases. So maximum saving is there uh, while we uh, while we are doing this uh, active strategies, and in passive strategies, maximum saving is there in the roof part. And we have said earlier also the maximum heat gain is there from the roof. That is why the maximum saving is also there when we make an energy efficient roofing system. So this is how uh, the simulation is there. And these strategies that have been incorporated in the building has been decided according to the discounted payback period and the energy efficiency. So this is how, uh, so in this we can see glazing and the insulating plaster. These are getting very high discounted payback period. So uh, while uh, making a, building, we can discard these two things and incorporate other strategies to get the less discounted payback period overall and with our optimum energy saving. And then we, when we get this uh, incorporating all the active and passive strategies, we get a model with a, with a EPI of 43.46 kilowatt per meter square per air from 77.04. From 77, it has been reduced to 43.46. And this consumption, this energy is then supplied to these solar panels. So for this uh, uh, 10 kilowatt power of 32 Tata solar panels has been installed. This TP300 series, these are the uh, properties of these solar panels and this is how the uh, total uh, rate or total cost of these solar panels has been calculated. It comes up to the 6,63,000 of these 10 kilowatt of uh, solar panels. So this, uh, uh, again, solar panels has been simulated for three positions. One is for 25% tilt, 10% tilt, uh, 10 degree tilt, 25 degree tilt, 10 degree tilt, and 5 degree tilt. So this tilt has been uh, taken from the uh, saying that uh, in the uh, winter season, the tilt has to be the latitude of the place plus 15 degree, it has comes out to be 25 degree. And in summer uh, conditions, the tilt has to be a uh, latitude of the place minus 15, it comes out to be uh, minus five degree or five degree tilt towards the north direction. So the uh, the tilt, uh, the orientation of the tilt has been changed from the south to the north direction. So, uh, so this, uh, these three tilts has been simulated and found that the 10% tilts uh, tilt come out to be the optimum one in which, uh, uh, in which the maximum energy generation is there. That is uh, 14,000. 785.93 kilowatt generation is there uh, from the tilt of 10, that is the latitude. When we take the tilt of a solar panel uh, equal to the latitude of the place, the maximum generation of electricity will take place with, and the discounted payback period of uh, the solar panels comes out to be 4.43. So it is not very high uh, payback period for the generation of electricity. I mean, and uh, we can see from the chart, the consumption of electricity is uh, 6,700 uh, in 87.48 and the generation is 14,785.93. So it comes out to be net positive with the generation is approximately uh, double the, uh, the consumption of electricity of this residence. And uh, we can also, uh, we can also go for the wind turbines because the uh, in warm humid climate uh, the some seasons are there there is no uh, there is no uh, sun and that's very cloudy uh, uh, seasons are there in this uh, climate type so we can go for the wind turbines also and uh, and the house is simulated for the wind turbines also for the, but uh, we can see when we uh, when we simulate for the wind turbines, gen generation of electricity is very less. It comes out to be 1,063 with a discounted payback period of 17.99. Uh, so we prefer using solar panel rather than wind turbine. So uh, 
this is uh, all from my side. Uh, so uh, in the in the first part, I have shown the uh, case studies of net zero energy building of office bu office buildings in composite climate, and then uh, remodeled and redesigned energy efficient building to make it net zero. And this is a live project of mine in which a uh, house in warm humid climate has been made a net zero and net positive energy building. Uh, thank you from my side. Thank you for taking us through a very, very informative presentation, Dr. Fatmi. It was very interesting to see the comparison of strategies that you've taken us through using all of these examples. And also the I am very much into it. And uh, this live project is very close to my heart. Uh, and within a few months, it will be started building also. So... Uh, the live photographs are there, but it is in the in, uh, in it is there in the foundation state. That is why I have not shared it because it will not help. When it will be built, then it will be a very helpful to show the live and the comparison from the simulation. So. Right, uh, we could see that uh, the whole uh, <laughs> process that you've taken us through, including the simulation that you've done for it. Uh, before we end the session, I have a few questions. So, does the construction process itself? Uh, play a role in classifying a building as an uh, as a net zero energy building. Did you have to uh, look at how the construction is happening for this building, uh, for example, where you already designed it to be a net zero building, but then uh, do you incorporate these uh, processes? For construction. Uh, construction process, I don't think if uh, if whatever strategies uh, we are talking about has been incorporated rightly according to the climate type and rightly according to the orientation, how it has been uh, suggested or been uh, proposed, then it will definitely work for that. Right. Okay. So adding to that, uh, the simulation tools that are used for design itself, uh, mm -hmm. is there a way of is, is there a tool for, you know, uh, incorporating this, uh, the construction management itself to happen? In yes, uh, there, is, there is a tool for construction management also. It is the BIM tool that is there incorporated in the, in the uh, Revit part. But uh, uh, I don't think, uh, for the big project, uh, for office building, it is very necessary. It has to be there. The construction management part has, has to be there and BIM is also very important while the uh, running of the building. When we talk about net zero building, the major part that has been played for making a building net zero is through the active strategy. And active strategies, rather it is the uh, it is HVAC lighting, it has to be controlled through BIM. So BIM plays a very important role while designing this uh, net zero building. Right. Uh, also, there's one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. sol solar PV panels on the roofs are very common here in India. In yeah, very common. Sense. But BIPV, we see that it's not catching up uh, as much as it is in the uh, country. Because, uh, because what happens in India, we installed uh, uh, solar PV panels uh, after uh, after building, after, after making building. It has not right. been integrated into the design. Then we propose this uh, PV panels uh, in the proposal phase and we uh, sought to incorporate these PV panels uh, in the proposal as a form of shading in the, uh, in the uh, courtyards or in the form of uh, the glass of the glaze uh, of the windows that is being used in the appropriate direction. Then uh, when we are, pro uh, we are proposing it, at the proposal level, then uh, BIPV can be uh, used and it will be work very effectively because we are using PV panels when the uh, building has been uh, built up and we have to give a renewable energy resource, then it has to be there on the roof only because no other place is left for incorporating the PV panels then. Right. Yeah. But it has uh, to be decided at the proposal level only. Yeah. Okay. So integration at design uh, beginning, I mean, in the conceptual stage is what in the conceptual stages. Sir. Right. Uh, thank you so much for patiently answering all the questions. Oh. And on behalf thank of you, thank you. Class Academy and Azad Ethos, it has been a pleasure having you here talk with us today. Thank, thank you for giving this opportunity. <laughs> thank you so much.